Hey everyone, here's how to make this crochet cotton skirt. I'm making it in a size small, but it's adjustable for size and I show you how to do that in the video as well as provide centimeter and inch measurements. You can also make it in any length that you want, midi, mini, maxi, it doesn't matter, all will work. If you want to make the top that goes with it as well, I will link it right here once it's out. For this project, you will need about 270 grams of sport weight or four ply cotton yarn, a 3.5 millimeter hook, stitch markers, scissors, dining needle, and some elastic for the waistband. Here are also the finished measurements of the skirt if you want to check your size, with the width being the full circumference that the skirt will sit around your hips, not just the flat measurement. I'll also be using centimeter and inch measurements so that you don't need to have the same gauge as me, but if you want to, here is the gauge of my piece. So to start, we're going to be making a foundation chain. So you'll need to make a slip knot and insert your hook. These are the number of chains that you'll need to do depending on your size, as well as the centimeter and inch measurements. But if you're using the centimeter and inch measurements, you need to make sure that this number is divisible by 12 plus three. So however wide you need to make your skirt, measuring around the widest part of your hips, you'll need to make a chain that length and make sure that you can divide it by 12 plus three. So the easiest way to do that is to take three away and then divide it by 12. Because I'm just making a small swatch, I'm going to make two lots of the grid squares. And so for me, that's gonna be 24 plus three because I'm doing two lots of 12 for the grids plus three to equal the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain up 27. So I've got my 27. So these first three chains are going to count as my first double crochet. So I'm going to be doing my first double crochet into the fourth stitch along. So chains one, two, and three will count as a stitch. And now I'm gonna do a double crochet into that fourth chain along. So you've got to do yarn over, insert into that chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So now I'm gonna go along the rest of the row, putting one double crochet into every chain. And when you get to the end, join back in and I will show you the next row. So this chain three here is going to count as a stitch. And for all future rows, if you have double crochets on the edge, the chain three is always gonna count as a stitch. Almost at the end of that row. Now for the next row, just like the top, if you've already made it, we're gonna start off with a chain five. The first three chains of this chain are gonna count as a double crochet, and the next two chains are gonna count as chains for our gap. So any row that you're starting off that needs a gap first, we're gonna chain up five, and if you're starting off a row that needs a double crochet first, we're gonna chain up three. So I'm gonna chain up five. Turn around. And now we're going to skip over those first three stitches and do a double crochet into the fourth. So this, this chain here, the, the first three chains is gonna count as this first stitch here. So then we need to skip this stitch and this stitch because those two chains are counting for those stitches. And I'm gonna do my first double crochet into that fourth stitch along. And then we're going to chain up two, skip two stitches, so skipping one and two, and do a double crochet into that next stitch along. And you're just going to go down the rest of the row repeating this. So we're going to chain two, skip two stitches, and go into that next stitch along, and keep going until you get to the end of this row. I'm just doing my last stitch and we're going to be stitching into that chain three that we did when we first started our double crochets. So I've done my two chains and now I'm going to go into the top of those chains from that previous row. So we've got our first stitches here and then I'm going to go into that first chain that we did and do a double crochet. Okay, so now we're going to start off with another gap. So we're gonna do this same stitch again as the first stitch. So because of that, we need to chain up five again. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, 
five. We're going to turn around and we're going to skip right over these chains that we did here and do our first stitch into the top of that first double crochet along. So double crochet into the top of that double crochet. And now for the next nine stitches, we're going to do double crochets. If you're doing a double crochet into where the chains are as opposed to the top of the double crochet, we're going to go through the gap, but then you'll do your double crochets into the top of those double crochets. So I'm going to go into the gap. I'm going to do the same thing, just a regular double crochet, but just going right through the gap. And now another one. Because we had two chains, We'll need to do two double crochets into that gap for it to continue equaling the same number of stitches. So now I'm going to yarn over and go into the top of that next double crochet. So we've got our four stitches. Now I'm going to go back into the gap again and I need to do two because we've done two chains. Into the top of the double crochet and the last lot of three. So you should have 10 double crochets in a row in total. Okay, so that is the bottom of our grid square thing. So now I'm going to chain up two, jump over the gap just like we did here and into the top of that double crochet. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing that we just did over here. I'm going to do 10 double crochets in a row going into the gap for this one, this one, and this one, and we're going to do our last stitch into the end. You'll obviously be making a panel that is much wider than what I'm currently making, so you just need to continue going along with this pattern of doing 10 double crochets in a row, and then chain two, and then 10 double crochets, chain two, until you get to the end, making sure to do your double crochets into the gap where you need to, and lining up all of these gap stitches on top of each other. So I'm just doing my last two double crochets into this gap. And now we're going to do a double crochet into that third chain that we did. So going to do a double crochet as normal into the chains that we're counting as a double crochet from the previous row. So there we go. So it's a bit, if you've already made the top, it's a bit different because for the top we had um, an extra gap on the side, whereas the skirt, we're not. We're doing it to finish directly on one of the squares and on this side, we're going to finish it on a gap. So now, because the next row is going to have more double crochets to start, I'm going to be chaining up three instead of chaining up five. So I'm just gonna chain up three, one, two, three, and that's going to count as our first double crochet. So turn around and we're going to skip this first stitch here because our chains are counting for that. I'm going to do a double crochet into that next stitch along. So you'll need to have four double crochets in total, but the chains will count as one. So I've done two. This is my third. And now one more for my fourth. And now we're going to do a chain up of two and skip two stitches. So chain two, I'm going to skip one, two, and I'm going to do a double crochet into that third stitch along and continue along until you've done four more double crochets. So this is my second and done. So that is our next row of that little square. Now I'm up to another gap. So I'm going to chain up two, skip over, and I'm going to do four double crochets, just like we did for that previous square. So that is gonna be the pattern all the way along here. You're gonna do four double crochets and chain two, four double crochets, chain two, all the way along until you've made it to the end of your row. So I've got my four double crochets, I'm gonna chain two, skip over two stitches and do four more double crochets. And now for the last couple of stitches here, we've got our chain five because we have a gap here. So I'm gonna need to chain up two to keep the gap going. And we're gonna do a double crochet into that third chain along. So it doesn't matter which side you count from, it's the middle chain. And I'm gonna do a double crochet. 
Okay, so to start the next row, we've got our gaps here. So I'm going to need to chain up five. So now we're going to chain up one, two, three, four, five, turn around. And this is going to be the last row of our little square things. So we're going to do exactly what we did down in this row here. We're going to put 10 double crochets in a row, putting two into that gap there, then chain two and keep going all the way down. So I'm just going to go ahead and put all of my chains into the top of the chains of the previous row. When you get to the gap, we're going to put our double crochets through the gap, just like we did down in this row here. And then once you've done 10, we're going to do a chain up of two. And then do 10 more. So now you'll need to keep repeating this pattern, doing 10 double crochets and two chains all the way until you get to the end of your row. Okay, so once you've made it to the end of your, your row, you're going to do your last double crochet into that chain three that we did at the start of the previous row. So making sure to count that chain three as a stitch. Okay, so now that is the end of our repeating pattern. So now you need to repeat rows two, three, four, five over again. So the next row would be this one with all the gaps here. Then you would do these other rows following it and just keep going until you've done as many rows as you want to do. Because we're starting this next row with the gaps, we're gonna to need to chain five. And we're going to skip those first three stitches double crochet into the fourth one along and then keep going along the rest of the row with your chain two, skip two stitches, double crochet, chain two, skip two stitches, double crochet into the third. So keep repeating this pattern that we are creating until you have made this as long as you want your skirt to be. For me, I did this many rows or this many centimetre and inches and it came about halfway up my calf. So depending on if you want it to be a mini, a maxi, a midi, you can make this as long as you want to be. It will stretch a little bit, so make it slightly shorter than you want it to be and we'll also be adding a waistband. The waistband is about 5 centimetres or 2.5 inches in width. so. Just make sure that you're counting that when you work out how long you want it to be. So go ahead until you have made it that length. So this is what my full skirt panel looks like laid out. Um, I couldn't fit this under the camera on my table, um, but we've got, this is the bottom here where we started and then the top where we finished. So it's going across ways and you'll wrap this around your body with this being the top and we'll join these sections together up until the point that you want your slit to be. So now all you need to do is wrap this around yourself up to just under where you want your waistband to sit because we're going to add some more rows for the waistband and measure down to where you want the slit to come to. You could just sew it all the way down if you want to. I'm going to sew it down to just above my knee and I will show you the row counts for that as well. And when we stitch it together, you want the good sides touching. So right now it is good side up. You might not have a good side and a bad side, but just if you prefer the way the pattern looks one side rather than the other. So now my good sides are touching and the underside is up and I'm gonna stitch down there up until around just above my knee. So I've got my skirt with the right sides touching and you'll just need to grab a piece of yarn that's approximately double the length that you will need to stitch it down. Always better to have a bit too much than not enough, in my opinion. Grab a darning needle, insert your hook. If you prefer to do slip stitches, you can, but it will be more noticeable. So um, that just depends on what you want to do. Um, Either will work, but the stitching with the darning needle is going to be much less noticeable. So I'm just going to stitch onto the top of that end stitch there and into that third chain up there. And I'm going to tie in a knot to secure, leaving a tail 
that we can weave in as well. So we'll weave that in afterwards. So now you just want to make sure that all of the stitches are lined up. And I'm going to just go through both of the panels like this. You can do mattress stitch if you prefer, but I wanted it to be a little bit more secure. So I'm just going to go through both panels. And you'll want to approximately do one stitch for all of the stitches going down the side. So there should be kind of three in each group. Um, you could just do two stitches for each row. That would probably be enough. But just make sure that you're going in at pretty regular intervals and not leaving big gaps because it probably will stretch open if you're doing that. So I'm just going to keep going down putting my stitches through both panels and you'll just keep going until you get down to the point that you've marked off for your slit to finish. On the other side it'll look like that. There will be a little bit of a thicker row here so it will be a little bit noticeable but not much thicker than the regular pattern. So once you have your side all stitched up, we'll start on the waistband and you'll need to turn the good sides out for this. So you want it to be the way that your finished garment will be. Then just hold your skirt from the slit side over here, fold it in half and use wherever you end up on that halfway point. So pop in a stitch marker to measure out the halfway point and that's where we're going to start our waistband from. You'll need to grab some elastic. I just got this from my local supermarket, but you can also get it from craft stores. I'm using white because that is the closest in color to my yarn. If you're using dark yarn, you could use black, or if, if you can get other colors, then that would work too. What you can do is you can either wrap this elastic around your waist to the tightness that is comfortable for you and measure that by putting in a safety pin into the point where the two sides will join or you can do this first row with the elastic and then measure it afterwards with the the skirt and measure the tension then so whichever one you want to do that's totally fine measure it now put in a pin or measure it while you're going and we're going to just start doing double crochets but we're going to be stitching the elastic into it to keep the end in place i'm going to tie it in a knot around the safety pin and then I'll just pop that through that starting stitch just to make sure that it doesn't slide anywhere. We will take the safety pin off later and fasten the elastic in. So now just grab the end of your yarn, make a slip knot, insert your hook and I'm going to insert into that first stitch yarn over and pull through the loop to secure. Okay, so just like with the rest of the pattern, a chain three is gonna be the equivalent height of a double crochet and that's gonna count as a double crochet for us. So I'm gonna chain up three, one, two, three. And that's gonna be my first stitch. So now I'm just gonna go around and put one double crochet into the top of every stitch. So just like we did with this section, we'll be going into the top of chains and we'll be going into the top of the actual stitches. It's gonna be exactly the same process. It's just that every stitch will be a double crochet and we're going to be incorporating the elastic in as we go. So let's put that around the back. So holding the elastic down to the yarn, this previous row here, I'm gonna put two double crochets into the gap, making sure that that elastic gets caught up in there. So two. And now I'm gonna do one double crochet into the top of that double crochet post. And then two double crochets into the next gap, making sure that that elastic stays underneath that first part of the stitch there. And then into the next double crochet. 
So just keep going all the way around, putting one double crochet into every stitch of that previous row until you get back to the start. And you should have your elastic in there and when you pull it tight, it will be pulling the skirt tight and all of the rows after this is also going to be um, elasticated as well. So we'll have a couple rows all elasticated like this to make sure that the waistband is nice and tight and secure. So keep going when you go back to the start of this row. Once you're back to the start, the top of your skirt should be looking a bit bunchy. I've just tried mine on and marked exactly where I need to tie the ends together. So if you haven't tried it on, try it on and pull the elastic until it's comfortably tight around your waist. It, it's okay if it feels like it might slip from this point because we're going to do more rows with more elastic. So this elastic won't be holding it on your waist alone, um, but you do want it to feel like it's not gonna just immediately fall down. So if you pre-measured your elastic and you measured it from like the end point to where it hit around your waist, just make sure that you add this tail to that section. So if you had measured that this was your exact waist, make sure that you measure that little bit and add that on. So then your new measurement would be there just because we've taken that amount out. Otherwise, if you've measured it up to here, you're just going to tie it to the start so that it doesn't slip any further down. So I'm gonna take this first safety pin out and then you'll tie where that point was knotted to where you've marked on the other side. So I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna tie this in a knot. So now I'm going to go back to that last stitch of the row and I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top of the three chains that we did to start that previous row. And put a slip stitch into those three chains, yarn over, pull through, pull through again. And now for this next row, I'm going to be doing single crochets instead of double crochets. So I'm only going to chain up one. I'm going to do a chain up of one. And then you're going to go around and put one single crochet into the top of every double crochet of the previous row. This is just because the double crochets, when they get bunched up, they get a little bit more wrinkly, but the single crochet will hold the elastic a bit tighter. So you're just going to grab the elastic, bring it up behind, so making sure that you're still facing the right side out. So you're just going to catch that elastic in your first single crochet. So to do that, you're going to insert into the top of that first stitch yarn over with the elastic under there and pull through. And now you're going to yarn over and pull through too. So now you can just go along the rest of the row, putting one single crochet into the top of every double crochet of that previous row. And we're gonna do this for a couple of rows, but I will show you how to keep going with this as we go. Once you've made it to the end of that row, your waistband should be coming together a bit more. So now I'm gonna do more rows of single crochets and you can do as many rows as you want until the waistband is as thick as you wanna be. If you want to, after each row, you can tie on your elastic, like measure it around your waist and make sure it's the right tightness and tie it on to secure it so it doesn't keep moving. Or you can just keep doing rounds and because we've tied it on at the start, it's not gonna go anywhere. So then when you finished, you can just keep tugging and pulling until it's the comfortability that you want. I'm gonna do that just so that it doesn't get too bulky behind the back, but if you're worried at all, just tie it on to the start of this row and keep going and trying it on after every round. The other option would be to add all of the elastic afterwards. Just using a darning needle, push that elastic through every row. I just think it would be a little bit more difficult with the doubled up elastic that I have, but if you have a thinner elastic, I think that could work. So now that I'm up to that first stitch, I'm just going to do a chain up of one, just like we did for the other one. So I'm going to go to that previous chain that we did, insert into there and do a slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain up one and I'm going to put one single crochet into every single crochet of the previous row. So keep going, following this pattern, doing 
one stitch into every stitch of the previous row till you get to the end, join on, chain up and keep going until you have done as many rows as you want to do. I did six rows in total and that's including that first row of double crochet, so five rows of the single crochet. Here is what the finished waistband of the skirt looks like after I have done my six rows in total, five being the single crochet rows. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out the video for the top as well if you're interested in making that. And if you have any comments, please leave them below and I will try to get back to you. See you in the next one.